Aloha. We're here with Representative Greg Takayama, and thank you for joining us on Aging with Grace, Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Representative Thanks, Takayama. I'm happy to be here, and I'm excited at the opportunity to talk about the uh, status of aging in Hawaii. Great. Yes, there's so much going on, mm -hmm. and, and so many of our uh, middle agers are moving up into the Kapuna zone. So mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about yourself and why this is so important to sure. you. Sure. Well, first of all, in terms of my own background, I'm a second term member of the House of Representatives uh, representing Pearl City, uh, Waimalu, uh, Pacific Palisades. Um, I've taken on as an interest um, issues regarding seniors. Um, I'm a, the co-convener on the House side of something called the Kapuna Caucus which is consisting of legislators and stakeholders in issues regarding seniors. And I might say that in terms of um, senior issues, there's good news and then there's really good news. Great. Well, the good news is that, you know, we, here in Hawaii, we're living longer than, than ever before. The average um, uh, length of, eight, length of oh, well, our average lifespan is, is in the 80s in Hawaii uh, for certain uh, demographics, Asian women, for example, it's as high as 88 years old. Wow. Um, it's, our lifespan in Hawaii is, is the highest in the country, and it's actually one of the highest in the world. We're behind Okinawa and a couple other countries. Um, so that's the good news um, in terms of the impact is that there are more and more seniors in Hawaii uh, as every year goes by. Right now, there are about a fourth of our total population oh. um, are seniors 60 years and over. Okay. In the next 15 years, it'll increase to about a third of our population because we're living longer. I'm 63 years old. Um, knock on wood, I'll be around for at least the next 20 years. And what's historic about aging in Hawaii is that we are um, aging more healthily than ever. In other words, um, as they say, 60s are the new 40s, mm -hmm. and that's really true in Hawaii because in right. Hawaii we tend to live a more active lifestyle, a more healthy lifestyle. So that's the, the good news. Very true. Oh, and also the really good news. Oh, yes, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as a result, I think um, senior issues are taking on more and more of an importance in the legislature and in government in general because I think more attention is being paid to the I hate to call it needs of seniors, but concerns of seniors. Because as I said, um, seniors are, are healthier than ever. They're contributing, not only, of course, as parents, uh, but also as grandparents, as, as caregivers to grandchildren. Um, Hawaii leads the nation in another area, and that's having multi-generational homes. It's not uncommon, especially in Pearl City, in IAEA, for um, homes to house three, four generations in one home. Wow. Because the cost of living prohibits uh, our children from affording their own home, we are learning to live together intergenerationally. And so in that sense, we're leading the nation. That's great. So do you see that as a major factor in, in the satisfaction level and why we have more quality of life uh, for our kapuna here uh, mm -hmm. as the cross-generational, multi-generational living? Or what do you attribute that to? I think so because uh, as I said, more and more, our city and, and state governments are providing activities for the seniors. That's true. Not just leisure time activities, but real activities in which um, they're a part of our schools, they're a part of our churches, they're a part of our community centers. Uh, not only accepting services, but providing services to our children, to um, uh, our other, uh, our younger people in the community. And that's a terrific thing to see happen in Hawaii. Definitely. So what, do, how does this work, just for our viewers out there mm -hmm. who aren't sure, do you get to choose the committees that you're on, or mm -hmm. do they get chosen for you, and um, then you just... Yeah, the, the regular committees on which we serve, for example, um, I'm serving as chair of the House Public Safety Committee. That's assigned by the leadership okay. of the legislature of the State House. Um, there are voluntary uh, caucuses um, that are... Um, special causes, in my case, Kupuna Caucus deals with senior issues. Right. There's a Youth Caucus, which deals with youth issues. There's an Education Caucus, Space Caucus, a right. whole bunch of others. I'm sure there's some crossover. Mm -hmm. but. And, and that's voluntary on the part of legislators who take a special interest 
in a special cause. Well, that's great. So mm -hmm. we're especially honored to have you today oh, well, you. since you chose this as your special interest. Mm -hmm. um, so why, can you tell me why this uh, matter, this issue is so important to you? Or? Well, part of it is parochial. Um, Pro City and IAL have one of the high, highest percentages of elders demographically in, in the district. Interesting. Um, we're right up there, Manoa Valley's up there. Uh, several other uh, um, jurisdiction, uh, districts are, are high up there, but Pro City and IEA are uh, in the top five in terms of um, elders in the district. So I have a special interest in that. Um, uh, I'm 63, as I said, so I fall into the category of senior, but I'm a healthy senior. Barely, yeah. Um, and so I think it's going to be, as I said, a, a growing interest on the part of legislators because there are also certain needs that I think um, are apparent um, to ensure that we take care of our our elders and that our elders take care of us as much as possible. And right. I, I could give you a couple of examples. Please do. Um, for a long time, the state has um, made it possible for seniors to live, as long as they're healthy, uh, able to live independently. No one wants to go into a nursing home. Um, more than 90% of seniors, if you ask them, say, I never want to go into a nursing home. I want to live at home. Uh, either with my family or by myself or with my spouse. Um, in addition to that, the cost of nursing home is, is enormous. It's more than $120,000 a year, as you probably know. Yeah. So there are th certain things that the state and counties can do to help our seniors live independently. Among them is to provide, fun provide funds for programs like Meals on Wheels, um, Handy Van, Emergency Services, Emergency Caregiving Services, that sort of thing that enables seniors who perhaps cannot drive but need access to their medical appointments right. uh, or exercise classes. Um, seniors may not be able to shop regularly, so Meals on Wheels comes in handy. So there is a program at the state level called Kupuna Care, and that program services thousands of seniors who may have some disability, may have problems um, with mobility, may have problems getting around even their own homes, but are able to live independently. And in those cases, um, the state provides things like Meals on Wheels, Handy Van, Emergency Transportation Services, but we don't do it enough. Right, so it's funded through the state, and you say we don't do it enough as in we don't have enough mm -hmm. coverage yeah. or we don't do have enough services? In terms of, I don't think we provide enough resources uh, for Kupuna Care to do what is needed. For example, um, in the last state budget, um, the governor asked for $4.1 million for the program. And what's usually happening is that the legislature adds another 4.5 or whatever million dollars to the program to make it a total of $9 million. And even at that rate, it only serves 8,000 or 9,000 needy elderly and that's a fraction of the demand and the real need. Um, this year, we're happy to report that the, the new governor, Governor Ige, has asked for $9 million in his budget to fund Kupuna Care. Great. And so we need to support his uh, request because I think it does fill a need. And to be honest, we'll probably have to in future years increase it even more to, to cover that. more seniors, exactly. Right. So can you just tell us how mm -hmm. to go about that? You said support Governor Ige. How can we, as concerned citizens, mm -hmm. do this? Can we, how can we do our part to make sure that mm -hmm. we get more funding? Well, first of all, um, contact your legislator. Contact your House member. Contact your senator. First of all, find out who they are. In your um, area. Yes. Okay. Who, who you are, district representative and senator um, are contact them and let them know it's important. Um, not just to, to seniors, but to everyone. I think it's in everyone's interest that we take care of our elderly because believe it or not, even you will one day be a senior citizen. Exactly. <laughs> well, also I'm a neighbor, I'm a friend, mm -hmm. I'm a family member, you know, it, it yeah. affects us all yeah. whether or not we're of that age yeah. now anyway. But also, yes, it does behoove us to invest in our future as Absolutely. well. Um, so that's great though, to mm -hmm. know that these initiatives are are, are at least going on, even mm -hmm. if it is not enough. Sure. Um, so what about that? That's at, at that level where 
uh, they're getting, they're needing a little more assistance. Yes. But what at that level? What about the level where they're still independent, mm -hmm. slight, but they're mm -hmm. they're they're getting a little more, uh, a little less uh, independent mm -hmm. than. Um, they have certain needs, but they're on a lower scale, but just so that they yeah. can <coughs> keep what, what they have. That's so. an ex excellent question. You know, um, we often expect government to do a lot for us, but at the same time, there are a number of civic organizations that are doing it on their own without government help. I'll give you one example. It's called uh, Project Dana. Mm. Project Donna, excuse me. Project, Project Donna is a voluntary organization um, with several uh, locations throughout the state and what they do is they're a clearinghouse for seniors who may need some assistance and maybe getting to their their weekly um, exercise class or medical appointment um, or maybe need help going to the grocery store um, so what project donna does is take in these requests and they hook them up with volunteers who are often seniors themselves who are still mobile who maybe can drive and they um, uh, pair them up with need in, and, and services and it does it all for hundreds of people every day throughout the state. Project Donna, uh, just to let you know, is, is uh, part of a, a nationwide initiative and it oh. stems from a, 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 an actually a, a Buddhist concept um, which de has to do with um, uh, providing for others because uh, one of the beauties of Project Donna is that those volunteers who uh, provide services for the needy elderly are oftentimes retirees themselves. And it's very often that eventually these volunteers become the recipients right. of these services. So it's a sustaining thing that doesn't require any government funding at all. And I'm happy to say is a tremendous success. Yeah, that sounds amazing, and it mm -hmm. sounds like we could use more programs like that. And yes. and I believe that it probably helps the helper as well because right. they feel good about helping, and they know yes. that they're kind of paying into it, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. paying it forward. So um, that's great, and they feel like they have more sense of purpose because maybe their responsibilities and things are are dwindling as they get older. So mm -hmm. that's wonderful. It that's provides just a real sense of 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 worth, I think, of of meaning of. of contributing to somebody else's uh, welfare. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And that's Project Donna, and you said that's a national thing? So that's, yes. that's wonderful. Yeah. Do you know of any other such organizations here, just uh, for our viewers to have some resources of? Um, I mentioned Meals on Wheels. Definitely. They deliver meals to the homebound, and they're always looking for volunteers throughout um, the, the, the uh, island of Oahu. Uh, to deliver meals um, in certain areas. Um, you don't have to cover the whole island. You, you can be assigned a certain neighborhood, your own neighborhood. Oh, perfect. Just drive uh, over there and, and they'll, they'll load your car up and you deliver them. And the thing about delivering these meals is you're not just delivering meals, you're providing a certain amount of companionship exactly. for a few minutes for people who you might be the only person they see for the whole day. Um, you know, I walk door to door as a as a elected official, and it's very often that you'll run into seniors, and they're living by themselves, and they're so happy to see you and and want to have you in and, and offer you a drink and sit down with you and chat. Right. Even if you weren't a representative, just to <laughs> oh, have course. some company. <laughs> just to have companionship. Yeah. Um, their only other companion might be the the mail carrier. Right. You know. Well, uh, that's a very good point, and I actually have a few more questions I want to ask you about okay. that. Uh, we're about to take a commercial All right, break. So and we can talk about some again. controversial issues. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborate and, and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there. 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island and a physician. I host a show weekly called Healthcare in Hawaii, where we talk about the most important issues in healthcare for our state, whether it's the dengue fever outbreak, the state of our public hospitals, how to find physicians and nurses for our patients, or really just the best things to do for our family's health. That's what you'll find on this show. I'll bring experts to your attention and we'll have a free-flowing dialogue. 
Thanks for joining us. Hi, my name is Hilary Weinberg. I'm the host of The Whole Gamut on Think Tech Hawaii. See us live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. or on our YouTube channel to hear us talk about world affairs from Hawaii and beyond. See you then. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. Aging with Grace, we are with Representative Takayama. So glad to have you here. You. Such an interesting afternoon already. Mm -hmm. And I would like to talk to you about something we were discussing during the break. Mm -hmm. and, and you said there's, there's a good side, a lot of good news, mm -hmm. a lot of even better news. But there's also some things that we need to keep an eye on to protect our kapuna, sure. as well as to uh, great things to do. So what, what, uh, what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you one controversial bill that will probably come up for discussion this session. It has, it's called the CARE Act. And it's a, it's a law that in various forms has been enacted by almost 20 other states on the mainland, but not in Hawaii. And in a nutshell, what it would do is, um, well, all of us has, have had a, a, a loved one who's been in the hospital for whatever illness, um, obviously, especially so among the seniors. But the Caregiver Act, would require hospitals to um, allow patients to name a caregiver and also provide an option for the, both the caregiver and the patient to receive training for um, when the patient is discharged to go back home. In other words, for oftentimes the patient will require a change of bandages, um, an injection once a day, taking certain medicines even orally and not mixing them up, but being sure to take them at the, at the appropriate times. Um, oftentimes, um, patients return to the hospital within 30 days because um, they fail to do something. Either they are living in unclean um, conditions or their medication is all mixed up or something else like that co that contributes to their uh, recurring illness. So what the Caregiver Act would um, do is provide a means for caregivers to receive some kind of minimal uh, instruction from the hospital before the patient is discharged to go home. Um, it could be how to take a blood pressure test. It could be how to change a bandage. It could be how to turn the patient over. What will happen sometimes, and especially in the case of elderly couples, is that they'll realize that um, I can't do that. Um, say the spouse of a patient is 80-something years old um, and may not be able to turn um, her spouse over once a day or, or help him to the, the, the bathroom, then they'll know ahead of time before they're discharged from the hospital that, you know, maybe need, I may need to hire a nursing care service to help me once a day, may need to hire a, a nurse who looks in on us on, at least once a week. Um, that's the idea behind, behind the, the CARE Act. It would um, mandate hospitals <clears throat> to provide the opportunity for caregivers and patients to receive this kind of instruction prior to their discharge. It's highly controversial. How is this highly controversial? Because I, I thought that this already kind of occurred. There's discharge nurses who go over the discharge instructions mm -hmm. and, and the aftercare instructions. So this isn't That's included in that? That's an excellent point. Some hospitals provide that service um, on a, on, and, and do it very well. Not all hospitals in Hawaii do so, un, unfortunately. So we've received reports of people who have um, have had their loved ones discharged without any kind of adequate instruction wow. as to how to care for them. So all we're asking is for hospitals to provide this discharge service consistently throughout the state at all their hospitals, not yeah. just the ones on Oahu, but the ones on the neighbor islands and exactly. even the most rural areas. Um, hospitals oppose this. Um, and well, that's why it's so, controversial. They oppose okay. this, this uh, proposal. Um, in Hawaii. Um, there are some groups like AARP that strongly support it and they've been instrumental in, in having it enacted, as I said, in, in almost uh, 20 other states on the mainland. Great. So they're lobbying for this? They are lobbying Wonderful. and uh, the other side has just as well just been as lobbying on the other side. And so probably a little more well-funded and uh, well-lobbied. So. Yeah. But anyway, so it's not strictly a senior issue, but it is an issue that affects seniors. Sure. Um, and so that, as I said, 
will be discussed this session. Um, up till now, we've not really been able to have a, um, a serious hearing, hearing on this bill, much less pass the bill. So um, it, it's controversial, but you know, I, I think that there is greater understanding on the part of our, our lawmakers, especially our leadership in both the House and Senate. And, I, and I'm hoping that there will be a favorable outcome for this measure. Right, I guess the hospitals are um, against it because it would cost them more money to have to train that's people? One of, that's one of their issues, um, money. They're, they're, one of the claims is that it'll add to their cost. Uh, but on the other hand, they're already required under federal law to provide instruction for the patients themselves before they're discharged. All this measure would do is extend that instruction to a caregiver if the patient designates one. And so the cost, as far as we can see, would not be substantial if you're already providing yeah, it for the patient. Exactly. Then you would perhaps <coughs> request, the hospital mm -hmm. would, okay, well, then make sure you have your husband, your neighbor, your whoever mm -hmm. be, you know, here exactly. when we do discharge or have them on the phone. I mean, it seems yeah. like a pretty simple thing. And, and as you said, many hospitals already do this. Um, the other concern hospitals have raised is um, a liability issue. Um, they're saying that... Um, when the caregiver receives instructions, he or she may mess it up when they get home and you know, maybe even make the patient worse. Um, and then the hospital will be liable, legally liable for the instruction that they provided to the caregiver. And so to protect against that, the measure provides um, an exemption from liability for the hospitals. Wonderful. Um, a very strong exemption so that they don't have to worry about being sued for um, their instructions to the caregiver. So I, I think we've addressed the concerns of the hospitals. I so. But as I said, I, I, I still think it'll be a controversial issue. Oh, so, but we'll find out soon. So how can um, <coughs> people support this? How do so they find the, out when it's being voted on or uh -huh. what they can do? Well, what they can do right now is, um, um, we talked about contacting your legislator. Yes. So there are two things they should contact their legislator about. Um, contact your legislature about the CARE Act and, and tell them, um, suggest to your legislator that it, you support it and that you know, you'd like to at least have a hearing on the merits of the bill and the demerits of the bill. Have it heard out by the appropriate committees and, and let us um, take a, a vote on it, um, right. having discussed all the issues. Um, it's, I, and it's important to at least um, have a public hearing on that issue. And also, of course, funding for our Kapuna Care programs. Right. So you're saying that at this point there's no hearing set. They just have mm -hmm. to kind of follow up and see or make sure that there is a hearing so that we can hear all sides yes. of it. Yes. Um, okay. There are bills alive and will be introduced when the legislature opens uh, tomorrow. Um, there are bills alive from last session that were never heard in committee. Oh, and I technically see. they're carried over. But just to make sure, um, several of those bills will be reintroduced so that we have a a fresh eyes looking at them yes. and um, you know but it, it, it's an issue that I hope will progress. That does sound like it'll be very effective if it goes uh, you know if it's accepted. We think so and you know we think that if um, almost 20 other states have done it from New Jersey to California without having um, the hospitals there suffer any adverse effects um, why not do it here? Yeah, exactly. With our numbers of elderly, with our numbers of, of healthy elderly, uh, let's do what we can to keep them healthy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you've been in office how long? I'm in my fourth year, my second term. Nice, nice. And so what things have, have uh, transpired since you have um, started that, that made you... Uh, you know, gave you a level of satisfaction, like, hey, you saw mm -hmm. that from the beginning and mm -hmm. uh, to the end, and, and uh, you feel that you've made some impact? Yeah. Or you know, there are, there are a wealth of things that you learn walking door to door you know, as a campaigner, as, as yeah, just a neighbor. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. That's uh -huh. what's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, so, you know, we do that regularly throughout the year. That's great. And one of the things I learned, for example, um, two years ago when I was walking door to door in Pacific Palisades, is that um, I walked up to a, a, a woman and she said, there's something you can do to help me. There's an albizia tree in my backyard, in my neighbor's backyard, actually. And I took a look at it, and it was almost 300 feet tall. 
and it was its branches were regularly falling not only on her homes her house but about a half dozen others in that same neighborhood it was a huge albizia tree and so um she said she asked me for help um so that was a real puzzler uh, because the albizia tree was on private property and it was actually um, on on the property of an elderly woman who could not afford to have it removed or even trimmed. Uh, would have been tens of thousands of dollars right. for a, a tree that huge. So she said, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. And meanwhile, our neighbors are deathly afraid of one day in a hurricane having the whole tree fall down on, on a half dozen of their, of their houses. Right. So i um, happy to say one of the things we were able to do was, was pass uh, funding for the state civil defense department to, in a case of a threatening tree like that on private property, have them go ahead and remove it. We provided, we provided about a million dollars for them to, to go ahead and do that. It turns out that this Albizia tree that my neighbor was concerned about was, according to the arborists who looked at it, the second tallest Albizia tree they would ever seen in Hawaii. Wow. Almost 300 feet tall. And so the cost of removing it was about $40,000. Oh my goodness. Uh, a huge amount that um, understandably this, this elderly woman could not afford to pay for herself. Um, but it did, did it need to be removed? Could it not just be trimmed enough to Albizias, not be a threat? Albizias grow so fast. They grow mm. you know, as much as six feet a, a year. Wow. Six feet a year. So if it had not been totally removed and its roots killed, it would have grown back within a few years. So the best thing that could be done was to totally remove it. Um, right now, the Civil Defense Department is working on um, fungicides that will enable them to kill Albizia trees. Uh, and they, uh, hard to describe, but they sort of collapse on themselves. Albizias are almost 90% uh, um, air and water. Oh, really? And what's, that's a problem with, because their branches are so light, they're, mo they're very um, apt to fall in the case oh. of high winds. And so what this new um, uh, poison does is it, 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 the, the tree collapses on its own trunk. And so you don't have to worry about its branches falling on, on homes and um, enormously reduces the cost of um, removing such trees. So they're experimenting with that kind of uh, fungicide now. That's but great. in this case, we actually had to go and, and have them remove it totally. And they have a list of um, uh, the 10 or 20 most dangerous Albizia trees, and they're working their way down the list now to try and remove them and remove the threat from, from innocent people having their homes and or their lives. Or their, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Their homes, danger. their vehicles, themselves, mm -hmm. their pets. So that's, that's yeah. a, a little bill that I was able to have enacted. That's great. Um, a, a little million time. dollar bill. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, and, you know. And the, the beauty of the bill is that it actually enables the state to um, build a homeowner if the homeowner has resources to pay for its removal. That's like if great. it's a private business right. or a commercial business, um, it can do that. That's wonderful. That You should be really proud. That oh, yeah, I am. And, and yeah, it's one of the things, as we were talking about, things you learn walking door to door from your neighbors. Right. Sometimes you never would have known about something absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Sometimes you can solve um, uh, a problem not only in your neighborhood, but, you know, the state as a whole. Sometimes. That's great. Mm -hmm. So getting back to um, your thoughts on what right now are, are the most pressing issues for mm -hmm. the Kapuna, right. um, I know that you <coughs> said that uh, their, their health care mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is one. Sure. So I'm wondering, um, you know, I know nutrition is a huge part yes. of, of their, <coughs> you know, health and their mm -hmm. um, quality of life mm -hmm. and even their mental and emotional well-being oh, yeah. is, is all affected nutritionally yeah. and so what kinds of programs are being done to make sure that besides I know there's mm -hmm. Meals on Wheels mm -hmm. and that that's I'm sure that's very healthy food also mm -hmm. but just having um, fresh natural uh, good food for our Kapuna mm -hmm. to eat. Excellent question and it and it relates to an initiative called Healthy Aging which is another program that um, encourages seniors to get involved in exercise classes, for exactly. example. Exactly. Because nutrition and mm -hmm. exercise are so yeah. important. And I'm sorry, we're going to have to take a break and okay. we'll finish this when we get back. Great. Okay. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. 
Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and of course you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with uh, artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, uh, uh, actors, of course. And we don't only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. Thanks for joining us on Aging with Grace, thinktechhawaii.com. We've got the illustrious <laughs> representative, Takiyama. Mm -hmm. And w before our break, you were telling us about a lovely initiative that mm -hmm. sounds like groundbreaking. And, and so please tell us a little more yeah. about it. Healthy Aging is actually one of the programs that's been ongoing on the part of the state. Um, we need to provide more funding for them to expand healthy aging programs. What healthy aging programs do is provide um, an opportunity for community centers to offer exercise classes in conjunction with that maybe um, encourage seniors to get involved in gardening. Gardening is a terrific outlet for them because um, it has the, the added bonus of not only providing exercise and outdoor activity for seniors but also good nutrition. Exactly. You know, they grow the right crops and, you know, they can harvest it themselves and supplement their, their uh, meager incomes with homegrown vegetables and, and fruits and other crops. Wonderful. So you're saying for the elderly who live in, in uh, like high rises sure. or, or something like that, mm -hmm. senior homes, then there's like a community garden that they can go there into? There are very often community gardens in, in many neighborhoods um, that the city, the counties have helped uh, encourage um, um, seniors to get involved in, not just seniors, but everyone to get involved in. Um, so the Healthy Aging Initiative, uh, as I said, encourages seniors to get involved in classes along the lines of exercise, recreation, fitness, and um, activities like gardening. How um, does it go about that? You said it encourages, but how, how do provides, they know about it? Yeah, it provides funding through uh, many of our community centers. For example, the Lanakila Senior Center is a huge um, center of activity for senior uh, activities um, on Oahu as well as uh, Mo'ili'ili. There's another senior center there and um, on a number of smaller uh, neighborhood programs um, if we have enough resources for um, healthy aging programs to get out there uh, we could expand um, by a great deal the number of seniors who are able to take advantage of these kind of courses. Yeah, because it sounds like a great course, mm -hmm. but I have to say that it also sounds like maybe it's not reaching everywhere. I mean, like in Y and I, is that mm -hmm. happening? And why? You know, in some of the places that are a little further out, yeah. like how how do we address these needs and concerns mm -hmm. to people in those places? I know those aren't your your districts. Well, I mean, what what is in my district is, uh, uh, for example, a, a weekly exercise class that um, occurred at a, a Baptist church in, in Pearl City, right, a couple blocks from where I live, and the class got canceled for lack of funding. Um, the city decided that you know, it had other priorities, so unfortunately uh, canceled the class after many years of um, you know, having about two dozen seniors involved in the class. It got canceled this wow. year, uh, a couple months ago. So you know, we are working on trying to get classes that class as well as others throughout the state resurrected and and if anything expanded by providing increased funding for that those kinds of programs yeah i guess there's a lack of vision uh when we're talking about like i think that the powers that be if you will mm -hmm. are not seeing the effect and the long-term savings oh, yeah. that they could mm -hmm. you know reap if they mm -hmm. would invest a little bit now then, then you know you've got uh, peace of mind for the people who are you know for mm -hmm. our age uh, who are going out there and working and taking care of our elders mm -hmm. when we get home and such and there's just so many levels that, that they could yeah help sometimes on. sometimes we tend to be um, uh, penny wise and, and pound foolish as the, as the saying goes by you know cutting back on programs that can be preventive exactly that can thank encourage you encourage healthy aging um, because 
uh, the bill has been growing for hospital care. Well, we can reduce maybe or cut into the amount of money we spend on hospital care if we encourage classes uh, like healthy aging and classes. insurance and mm -hmm. all of that exactly. exactly. So Pennywise and Palm Foolish sometimes, but we're working to, to remedy that as, as, as well as we can. So again, <clears throat> you would recommend to contacting your okay. local <laughs> legislator um, at the House and Senate le level. Um, if you don't know who it is, um, there are resources to enable you to do that. Um, if you have access to a computer, just type in um, Hawaii State Legislature. It'll lead you to a legislative website, and you can you know find out your legislator by finding out by typing in what district you live and what area you live in. Right. And it'll tell you. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Um, is there anything, I'm sorry, do you see that you see in the future going forward that, that you would like to see in yeah. place? If you had a million dollars, what would oh. you do if you... Oh, not even a million dollars, maybe, okay. maybe even a tenth of that. Okay. You know, uh, one of the, as we, as we live longer, um, one of the growing diseases that's affecting our elderly population are, are Alzheimer's and related dementias. So and that's true. going to be a growing problem. So true. Um, unfortunately, um, Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, there's no cure for that. There's no medicine for that. There's no real prevention for that. Uh, but it happens. I might argue that nutrition plays a big part sure. in yeah. causing it. But it can, anyway, go it on. can. Healthy, you know, keeping your mind active, if, of course, is, is certainly helps, um, helps uh, delay that. It may not totally prevent it. Agreed. Um, but it's going to become a growing uh, concern. Um, so one of the initiatives that we are proposing this year is to have the State Health Department designate someone who's in charge of promoting public education about Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm. If you're a family caregiver, and I can speak from experience because my dad died from, from dementia, is um, where do you go? Who helps you? Um, there comes a time when um, your family is unable to care for um, a victim of dementia because they will tend to wander off. They may tend to have um, a really active, almost violent, you know, right. um, uh, occurrences. So you know, you may not be able to care for them in a in a home setting. You may need to have them in a in a some kind of home, a protected home. So where do you go to find that kind of help? Um, as I said, that's, that's one of the dilemmas uh, that caregivers face. And so we need uh, someone who can perhaps take the lead in terms of offering this kind of public education. As we talked about, what are, are the things people can do to maybe delay the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia? What are some healthy activities they can, they can um, pursue to, to delay that? And of course, what can um, families do when it does happen to them? You know, both at the early onset, onset and towards the end when they may need a, a more um, uh, strong 24-hour um, nursing yeah. care, more structured nursing care. Um, there are issues like that that will be a growing concern in our communities. And so we're asking for the state to set aside maybe $80,000 to designate um, a Alzheimer's slash dementia coordinator for the State Department and take the lead on that. Not a million dollars, not even half a million dollars. That's a dollars, great a fraction idea. Of the state budget, but fills a, a tremendous need and a growing need in our in our state. Yeah, I'm sure if, if we looked at the numbers, mm -hmm. it is growing and it is a huge number, and mm -hmm. that is something that could be easily addressed. Sure. And you know, with with this position that you propose, I think mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. So, is there anything else that you can think of, or that you? Uh, you know, was close to your heart or that you would personally mm -hmm. like to see? Long-term care. Long-term care is another issue, um, highly controversial. Everyone will need it at some point. As healthy as we, as everyone is, at some point, statistics say that towards the end of life, even the healthiest senior will fall into illness and require an average of two and a half years in an, wow. an intensive care home of some kind, a wow. nursing home of some kind. I didn't realize kind. that. Yeah. yeah, everyone wishes they, you know, or thinks they, oh, they're just going to, fall over or not wake up one day, but that's mm -hmm. not the reality. No, at, at some point you will fall ill and your family won't be able to t take care of you on a 24-hour basis. Um, but the cost, as we were saying earlier, of, of uh, nursing care is so very prohibitively expensive. 
So one of the bills that we're throwing out there, um, and that's endorsed by the Kupuna Caucus, is to um, provide for a long-term care nursing program, uh, an insurance program of sorts, by um, adding a half percent to the general excise tax statewide. And that would fund a, a, a long-term care program run by the state that would provide an average of uh, a year and a half benefits for some form of nursing services to those who fall ill. Ah, I see. So it would be sort of not funding the existing nursing homes, mm -hmm. but a, a whole new kind of That's right. um, initiative. It would provide, for example, um, if you fall ill, um, and assuming we create a funded um, long-term care insurance fund at the state level, you would qualify for a certain amount of benefits per day for as long as two years. Um, and, and it wouldn't totally pay for the cost of uh, nursing care, but it wouldn't bankrupt you. You know, you would contribute a part of it. Um, as it is now, um, you would have to pay for all of it. Right, but yeah. wouldn't the elderly be affected by that increased tax? Sure they would. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's a controversial bill. Not, no one wants to raise taxes. One of the aspects of raising the GET tax is that the visitors, our visitors to Hawaii, pay a large share of it, as much as 30 to 40 percent of it, um, through their purchases of food, beverages, hotel. They pay the general excise tax. They pay a large share of the general excise tax. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's, that it's uh, controversial free because you know, what we're proposing is a tax increase, but I think it's at least worth the conversation. Definitely. What can we do as a society to take care of our elderly without um, bankrupting them, without sending them into poverty? Um, as we currently have to do to qualify for Medicaid, you have to basically impoverish yourself. Um, so what can we do? What, what are some other alternatives? Because the state pays for half the cost of Medicaid, um, and it's amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars, and it will eventually cost the state untold billions of dollars to fund Medicaid at the rate we're going. There has to be other solutions, and this is just one of them. You're right. Well, I appreciate you at least exploring other options mm -hmm. and being open to the fact that maybe that's not the best, but, but there certainly are other options that we need to explore to Absolutely. solve this growing yes. problem. And uh -huh. So I thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. I've um, enjoyed it. Yes, we've enjoyed having you. And if there are any parting thoughts that you'd like to leave our viewers with besides just get a hold of your mm -hmm. area representative and senators and write to them and mm -hmm. let them know um, what your thoughts are and what you support the bills, uh, which are the, sure. the ones that you are most intimately. Yeah, the, the one controversial bill I talked about was um, assistance to caregivers. And one thing for our viewers and listeners to remember is that if you're not already a recipient of caregiving, or if you're not a caregiver yourself, one day you will be. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time you're again. Welcome. And um, take care. Thank you. Same thank you. you. Aloha.